This presentation is recorded in conformity with the CSULB Academic Technology Initiatives recommendation. Slide 1. Controversy 9. What is the future for social, for social security? When it comes to the future of social security, experts say there are few scenarios that can play out. In this lecture, we will discuss what social security is and what the financial status of this governmental program is. Slide 2. What is social security? Generally, the term social security describes a program that uses public funds to provide a degree of economic security for the public. The specific social security discussed here is the United States, States government program established in 1935 that provides old age, disability and survivor's insurance as well as supplemental security income an income for elderly or disabled people. We discussed about supplemental security income in our Controversy Act under Poverty Among the Old section, page 338 in our textbook. In other words, you can simply say that Social Security is the public retirement pension system administrated by the federal government. By the way, Social Security is the largest domestic government program U.S. has at current time. So how does Social Security work? In the United States, employers and employees are required to pay Social Security taxes. The money raised from these taxes primarily goes to providing benefits for those who have reached retirement age or are otherwise currently eligible. In this way, today's, today's workers provide funds for the people drawing benefits today, and when today's workers retire, the workers of that time will, at least theoretically, provide the funds. You receive Social Security benefits based on the amount of Social Security taxes you have paid, which up to a certain maximum amount is based on your income. People who have had greater incomes tend to get greater Social Security benefits, but Social Security also pays a disproportionate amount to people earning low incomes. They need the money more, and the dollar they pay in Social Security taxes provides them higher benefits than a dollar paid by a high roller. In this way, Social Security in principle provides for those in need. Social Security retirement benefits average around $14,760 a year for a single individual. Again, the money to fund Social Security comes from its own separate payroll tax on earned wages during working years, which is then subsidized as a wage repayment during retirement. Yet, Social Security was never meant to be used as the single source of income for people in retirement. Slide 3. Main Futures of Social Security What most people think of when they hear the term of Social Security is retirement annuity part of the program. But Social Security is more than just a retirement income program. It provides wage earners with disability insurance and life insurance. We previously said that, local secu that Social Security is funded through its own payroll tax, which is a regressive tax system. So that means a person earning $20,000 a year and a person earning $106,000 a year will both pay the same rate tax which is 6.2%. And people making more only pay 6.2% on the first $106,000 of income. However, in 2011, the tax on individual, individual wages was temporarily reduced to 4.2%. This was considered payroll tax holiday and was intended to stimulate the economy. 
Social security is modestly progressive in its distribution of benefits because of the replacement rate of the proportion of wages replaced by social security at the point of retirement. Success and doubt. Slide 4. Social Security remains America's most successful and perhaps most popular domestic government program. But there is debate over whether Social Security is 1. A welfare program designed to prevent impoverishment in old age or Two, an annuity program that entitles everyone who pays into it to receive proportional benefits. As you can imagine, as any program that tries to accomplish such fundamentally di different goals, it's bound to have both its challenges and its critics. Slide 5. Pay as you go. In here we're going to discuss about this pay as you go system. The Social Security Trust Fund is a large account where all the payroll taxes go. This large account, called the Social Security Trust Fund, originally was designed to operate as a modified pay-as-you-go system where the money collected each year mostly pays for people who receive benefits in that, in that same year. If more money is collected from payroll taxes than it's paid out that year, then the trust fund runs a social security surplus, which obviously it's a thumb up. But the baby boom generation is much bigger than the cohort before or after it, so it is forecasted by some economists that the generation following doesn't have enough workers to contribute as much as will be needed under the pay-as-you-go system. Slide 6. Eligibility for Social Security. So what are the criteria you become eligible to collect your money from this fund? To be eligible for Social Security benefits, a person must be age 65 or age 62 for early, early retirement and have worked for 10 years in a job where Social Security taxes were deducted. There are discussions for having the age of Social Security eligibility slowly raise from 65 to 67 over the next few years. And some people suggest raising the age of eligibility even higher. But this could create more hardship for minority groups who have a lower life expectancy than Caucasians. Slide 7. We continue discussing about eligibility for Social Security. Others suggest reducing Social Security benefits to make them reflect the actual rate of inflation. But an across-the-board reduction would result in more hardships for the poorest beneficiaries. And there are others arguing for making eligibility means-tested or only available to people whose income falls below a certain threshold. In here, the other variation is an affluence test, where benefits might be eliminated for people who are above a certain threshold. Slide 8. Privatization. Privatization for Social Security can mean several possible changes for the current system. One, will be to increase the level of funding, move from a pay-as-you-go system to a funded system that involves an increase in national savings. For example, it can be investing a part or all of the trust fund in private savings such as the stock market. Another change refers to accompanying the private investment with increased choice over the individual retirement savings. And there is another change. It will eliminate the way Social Security redistributes benefits either from one generation to another or from high-wage earners to low-wage earners. Slide 9. We continue discussing about the privatization possibilities for Social Security system. 
So let's say we agreed with the proposed privatization changes, yet we have to consider the problems we run into. Such problems could include 1. To finance the privatization of Social Security, the federal government would have to borrow money to, wake up, to make up for retirement benefits already promised to people now retired. 2. If investing the trust funds in the stock market would mean that by 2015, Social Security would have owned $800 billion in shares, or 10% of the entire stock market. This would be a big, a big step toward national influence over the stock market. So in here is the issue of equity versus adequacy, in which people can argue that they will do better by saving the social security benefits on their own. With such argument, we need to realize that social security represents a transfer of wealth from younger to older people. In effect, Social Security involves a modest redistribution of wealth to give a moderate, adequate level of benefits to lower wage earners. Slide 10. In here we will discuss about women, social, spouses and Social Security. The changing of social conditions, such as the role of women, raised another issue in the debate of how Social Security treats citizens over the course of life. Therefore, married women are entitled to 50% of their husband's Social Security benefits, as long as the husband had 10 years paid into the system. And if the husband dies, the wife can get a higher amount of her deceased husband's Social Security benefits. And here it's important to mention that Social Security was originally planned for one earner family, but in our economy more than 70% of women are in the labor force. In addition, almost three quarters of older people who live in poverty are women. The poverty among women is given by the today's higher divorce rates, gender pay gap, and the fact that married women earn more from their husband's benefits than their own work benefits. Um, and these are just few of the gender inequalities with Social Security. When discussing about spouses, we also need to remind about same-sex couples. With same-sex couples and Social Security, oh well, Social Security rules for same-sex couples just got a little less murky. Um, so they're still pretty complicated. Here's a rundown to help same-sex couples understand the ins and outs of claiming benefits. First, the latest news on August 23 1st, 2015, the U.S. Department of Justice gave its blessing to say uh, that the Social Security Administration would treat married same-sex couples equally across the country when determining eligibility for benefits. This decision came in a federal lawsuit filled by same-sex couples and surviving spouses who were denied Social Security benefits because they lived in states that did not recognize their marriage. The Justice um, Department determination has no bearing on unmarried same-sex couples. In other words, same-sex married couples who were living in states that didn't recognize their unions and who had field for Social Security will now be able to collect the benefits. This ruling follows, of course, the U.S. Supreme Court's June 26, 2015 decision granting marriage equality to all without regard to gender or sexual orientation. Before that, the Social Security Administration had denied applications for benefits from same-sex couples living in non-recognition states. That recognition, uh, that restrictions no longer exist. Slide 11. For this book, we, for this book chapter, we have five interesting readings debating over the future of social security system. In reading 38, Saving Social Security, a Balanced Approach, 
Authors acknowledge that the Social Security Trust Fund faces a long-term deficit, but they are opposed to diverting payroll taxes revenue into private accounts. You will find suggestions and proposed solutions that authors give ab about the current social security system. Slide 12 talks about reading 39, the necessity and desirability of social security reform. And here the author takes a more cons conservative approach to the issue of social security reform. So what are the Ponero's main assertions and what solutions does he put forward? Reading 40, social uh, security reform and benefits adequacy is in slide 13. And in here the author, in this reading, the author points out that any raise in the retirement age will bring complications. So what are the contours of Thompson's framing of benefit adequacy when it comes to social security benefits? In slide 14, uh, we talk about reading 41, social security for yesterday's families, family. And in here, the authors remind us that social security was implemented during a very different historical time when Americans lived much shorter lives on average than they do today. So what reforms are they suggesting um, need to be made to adjust uh, to the changing modern family and its need um, in later uh, life? Slide 15, uh, we will talk about the reading 42, the future of social security proposals you should know about AARP. So in here, the main question is, um, what can be done to improve the financial health of social security? Outlines are given as the pros and cons in order to describe the benefits and drawbacks of the major proposals to change social security. And that is all for Controversy 9. Have a great day and let me know if you have questions. Thank you.